Good morning. A little piano music to start with. Music teacher from out in Arizona that used to be in our youth group a few years ago. <laughs> Tony Tetro. Let's let her give us an intro. that song because his eye is on the sparrow. Guess what? What we're going to be talking about today is when it feels like God doesn't answer prayer, you've got to know his eye is on the sparrow then he's watching over us too. To all of you that are Friends and family and church members. See, I'm in the land of the living. Becky and I are doing just fine. We just, too much stuff going on around our world, our little community. So we decided we'd just make sure and have church together here. Spread the word for anybody that might be still coming on. Morning, Marsha. Morning, Kyle. Susie. Be praying, if you would, for Joel and Tony Tetro pastors out in Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, Joel just lost his dad this week and we uh, we want to offer prayer for him and for Tony and for the loss their family has suffered. Tremendous man of God, tremendous pastor in that community. He's going to be sorely missed. again in the midst of uh, still in the midst of this nightmare COVID mess that we have going on around our world but guess what it it does not mean that God is out of control or lost control or or somehow he is not a uh, aware of our situations every one of us have prayer and prayer concerns that we pray for and and that we are uh uh, bringing up before God, and sometimes, sometimes it just gets a little bit, um, almost discouraging to look at our world, and and I mean it more than politically. I mean it all it, overall. See it implode in on itself. Um, I, I, politics. Uh, I get accused for being uh, too too vocal politically, but. It's not true. Uh, actually, if you if you look at who I am, I am not unhappy. I know my God is in control, and I'm not too concerned about what's ahead because, again, my God is in control, and 
I'm not so sure that we don't just get what we deserve. Uh, whether you are for the po present politics or against it makes no net matter. I believe that America in a, in, a, in a general and our world in, in, in particular has let their eyes drift away from God and have uh, decided we'd try to do things on our own, both uh, humanly and as nationally. And as I posted, you know, God's, gonna, God's not lost control. Therefore, he is still uh, in the midst of this. So to all of you that are jumping on and watching with me, just, you know, just, just be aware. I'd rather be in church preaching, but... Uh, this is just as good. <laughs> and if you say, well, how come you're not sitting in your, in your easy chair, in your, uh, uh, your bar stool preaching like you usually do? Well, it's, this has been a long two weeks for Becky and I, and, and, uh, I'm, 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 it's good that I got this much done. You better be glad I've got a shirt on. Uh, no, seriously. Uh, we, it, this is, this is where we are. We're, we live out here, I'm America, 50 miles from nowhere, um, 50 miles from where you can buy groceries, uh, for those of you ladies, 90 miles from any place like Walmart, 80 miles from any place like Walmart, and uh, and we're happy, we're, we're satisfied with that. So, th you're, you're lucky to get what you get with me, uh, this is, this is, uh, this is who we are. So here we go into, uh, and I'm not going to have anything to throw up on the screen behind me. That's another reason why probably you don't have the the um, uh, the to, something to read. Those of you that are kind of on our um, texting list, um, you got your notes from what uh, the sermon is going to be. The rest of you, if you wanted it, let Becky know. And if you didn't get it, let Becky know, and I bet you she can get you something if you'll just if you'll just uh, text her. But anyway, here we go. So my my thought today was this. My thought today was, what do we do with unanswered prayer? What do we do with prayers that we think, man, we know exactly what God's mind is, and we are going to, um, you know. We're going we're gonna to pray and we're going to see God answer these prayers and we're going to, by golly, this, this is going to come out our way politically or, or whatever. Maybe it's your job or maybe it's your, um, you know, the moisture. And I'm looking outside. If you notice, I'm kind of looking over the top of, of the camera here and looking outside. You guys, you know, really you need to see this. But we don't get moisture very often and it snowed. And so we're happy. And then out across the snow in my driveway as I'm looking out there comes a whole covey of quail. Oh, 20 or 30 quail come up and, and eat out of my bird feeders right outside the window. And it's really distracting, I'm going to have to tell you. But, uh, but the, point is, the point that I'm making is we prayed for moisture and we prayed for moisture. And man, this summer we just didn't get any rain. We just didn't get hardly anything, no snow this winter. And yes, I know we've got still got a lot of of, uh, of the winter still uh, still left, a few months left. But, but you know, the thing is, is that uh, what do we do whenever we pray for moisture and we don't get it? What do we do when we when we pray for um, God to move in our world and, and he doesn't seem to agree with us? Um, uh, you know, be aware. Don't get discouraged. Uh, when we ask the questions, what's happening in our world? You know, does it... Does it seem to you sometimes that God just takes his own sweet, precious time answering your prayers? Why does he take so long? You know, it, doesn't he care? Isn't he aware that you know what you want and therefore he ought to just pop it out and give it to you? Um, well, that's exactly what I come to talk about today. We don't always get what we think we're going to get in the timing we think we're going to get it. If you go to your Bible, take your Bible, and always, 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 I don't care who the preacher is. I don't care what he's, what he's talking about. I don't care where he's at with his, uh, with his preaching. Pick up your Bible. Take your Bible to church 
And, it, and right now, if you're right here with I won't see if you jump up and run and go get it. But you need to always look at God's word together. And even though I bring out one particular version, you can read it in your particular version and be able to uh, follow along and be able to see what what's agreeing and what's disagreeing and what's not disagreeing, but I mean different in, in the way that things are said. So always, always, always look at your, uh, look at your Bibles. Second Peter chapter three, verse three through 10 is where I'm going to start out reading quite a, quite a bit of reading here, but it, but it's important reading. It says, first of all, be aware of this. Scoffers will come in the last days to scoff. And does that, that, that sound familiar? Man, I mean, people make fun of of, uh, of of us Christians all the time, saying, "Well, you know, you 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 have such a big God. How come he didn't? How come he didn't answer this? How come he didn't take care of that situation?" Uh, just keep reading with me. Scoffers will come in the last days to scoff, living according to their own desires, saying, "Where is the promise of his coming?" Since ever since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they have been since the day the beginning of creation in other words nothing's changed how come it is where where he promised he would come again he hasn't come again where is the promise of his coming you know scoffing at our beliefs and 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 living according to their own desires that's that's something we got to realize that is is important for this scripture he's they go on and say they will, willfully ignore this. Long ago, the heavens and the earth were brought about from water and through water by the word of God. In other words, God spoke it and it came into existence. I, there is no such thing as evolution. I'm not, you can mark me down as a heretic for that and in in thinking that I'm some wild-eyed, crazy guy with a sign. Okay, if I were to have a sign, it would say repent. It wouldn't say uh, anything else. But just know this, for, you know, that God spoke this into existence through these waters. The wor world of that time perished when it was flooded. So not only did he create it, he brought it about that he flooded it because of the sin upon the earth. But by the same word, this present heavens and earth are stored up for fire being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. There is a there is a judgment coming, folks, and it's not going to be water. It's not going to be flooding the earth. This time he's going to be done with the earth. He's going to just absolutely, it's going to be burned up. Um, and you don't want to be there. And I can tell you this morning, and I will tell you this morning, how you can miss that, okay? Dear friends, don't let this one thing escape you. With the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not d delay his promises as some understand delay, but is patient with you, not wanting to any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. You see, God does not want to have anyone perish, die, and go to hell. He does not want that for you. He does not want that for any of your friends or family or neighbors. He doesn't want that for anybody in the world. So therefore, his delay is not what you think of as delay. His delay is patience so that people can come to know him. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in, in, a thief, and on that day the heavens will pass away with a loud noise and the elements will burn and be dissolved, and the earth and the works on it will all be disclosed. Listen, God's going to take care of this. And, and you know, if you want to put it, this is a good way to say it. Uh, we just read the end. We just read the end of the book. God wins. So don't get all concerned over politics today. God's going to win. Don't get all concerned about who is in the in the office of president or or in the in the royalty in, in another nation all don't worry about that god is the one who is king of kings and lord of lords and he will be the one who does so uh, let's just take a little bit of time and tell him thank you for that father thank you for the word of god and thank you for its promise to us that you are in control and always will be and I pray that you would give power to your word through the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So take this set of verses that I just read and insert whatever 
unanswered prayer you may have. I wrote down a few. Why doesn't God step in and bring about the political answers to the questions we have? Why, why does he seem to, to, to imply that we're going to do one thing and politically somebody else ends up in there? Um, it doesn't matter whether you voted for Biden or whether you voted for Trump. It doesn't matter if you like the personality of Trump or whether you don't like the personality of Trump. It doesn't matter if you like Biden or whether you think that he's uh, a, a, an, an incredible danger to our uh, uh, America. Um, you have your own politics and boy, I'm, I'm happy to let you have yours. You have them right where you want them. Uh, but my answer, my answer is how come God didn't? My question is, how come God didn't answer your prayers your way? Where is the answer to prayers anyway? What are we waiting for? Where is God when it hurts? You know, um, I deal with a lot of physical pain. Uh, you, most of you know that. That's the reason I sit down most of the time when I'm preaching and when I'm teaching. And, and that's why a lot of times it's, it's a little bit difficult. Guess what? It's who it's what God gave me. I've had I've had preachers tell me if I just had more faith, I could have healing. I, I've had people tell me, well, if you drink this herb or you take this 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 uh, 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 essential oil or you do this or you do that, you can't believe how much I have tried different things and everything. You know, so it doesn't work. So what does God doesn't care? And no, that's not exactly it. When we look at it, Paul also had trouble and God told him, hey, look, my grace is sufficient for you. You're going to get what you get for your life and you're going to pay for what you pay for. And you're going to you're going to be able to uh, suffer through what I want you to suffer through for my own reasons. And, that, and that's important for us to understand when we go to looking at these facts your way does your answer to prayer is not always what God wants you to have because of you particularly. So let's pull back away from uh, the, the 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 big wide world view right now, and let's look at your particular issue, whether you have cancer or whether you have. Uh, uh, peripheral neuropathy like me or whether you have or you have a, a, a diabetes or whether you have um, you know heart disease or well it doesn't matter what you have you have your tests and I have mine your marriage is your test and I have my tests you have your job that you may or may not care for and I have uh, what we have uh, I see it all the time where people are, are are challenged to live their lives in a way that honors God with money. And I've seen them where they have to have to do the same thing when they don't have anything. Guess what? You are an individual. It does not mean God does not love you. It means God does love you that you have particular circumstances. So let's look through, let's, look, let's run through a few facts. Okay, fact number one. He has promised to provide your necessities. Put this part in italics. In, within his will. He's prov promised to provide your necessities within his will. Food, clothing, provisions. Uh, Philippians 4.19 says, In this same God who will take care of me will supply all your needs from his riches, his glorious riches, which has been given to us in Christ Jesus. We have a supply of need that comes straight from God through Christ Jesus into our lives. You say, but wait a minute. I didn't. I, I don't get healing when I pray for it. I don't. I don't see things happen. Guess what? Remember, I told you to put in italics within His will, not your will. His will. Fact number two: He will answer all your prayer in His perfect will. Italics again for your specific need. Uh, Romans eight twenty six says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our distress, for we don't even know what we should pray for, nor how we should pray, For but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. 
And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Did you get that? It doesn't always come in your will. It comes in God's own will. We are so prone to want to, to and I'm looking up a verse here, um, we, we are so prone to want to quote the verse and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. You recognize that? Okay. As I look that verse up, it is two verses after where I just read. The two verses that I just read are the two verses right before what he says. And we know that all things will work together for good. So if you tie them together, what you have is... The Holy Spirit is going to be there in our distress, and we don't even know what to pray for. But when we pray, we know that when we lack the words, God's going to fill it in. The Holy Spirit's going to fill it in with groanings that we don't even know how to say. And that the, that the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's will. So when we pray, be ready to accept verse 28 Whenever we read verse 27, we need to realize that the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is the one who is going to pray for you in God's will. You've got to be ready that we know that all things will then therefore work out for good to them that are in God, that love God and who are in, uh, in his will. So <clears throat> he wants you to be in his will. Fact number three. God says to us, he says you, he will protect us at any cost, even to the point of taking you home whenever it's time. I just lost a good friend um, that, that was in our church, and we, we were still mourning for her. Uh, she had cancer, and cancer took her home, and uh, her husband grieves, and he still struggles over, over whether God, uh, it, it, you know, didn't, why God didn't answer prayer. And my answer to him is, God loves you, God loved her, and God is has taken her home to keep her from some of the things that she was about to have to face. The same is true for you. God is, he will at the point of, of even taking you home to be with him. As long as you know Jesus Christ is your savior, that's the end result. Is, is that is, is all of us are going to eventually go home to be with him. And some of us says, some of us say, well, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus, come now. Well, that's true, but let's, let's trust him for that too. So Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 tells us to look for him as our helper. He said, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently says the Lord, say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what men can do to me. So when we are looking for God's answers to our prayers, we have to realize God is there. God is in control. God is able to, to totally control my life and where it's going. And I have to say... <laughs> You know, I posted a, a deal the other day that says the reason reasons why I am not afraid, reasons why I am not fearful. Number one, God. That's it. That's me. I'm not going to fear. What can I fear? What men can do to us whenever we have God as our helper? And he has said he would even take us home before it gets too rough. So fact number four, let's go to, go to another one. He is more interested in the growth of your character than in you getting what you want. Hmm. This one doesn't make people warm and fuzzy and happy. This is the one, this is the statement that makes people write me and say, what are you thinking? Why are you saying these things? Why is it that you think that me not getting what I want is what God wants? Well, I've got news for you. Turn it around. What God wants should be what you want. So here's what it looks like in scripture. James 1, 2 through 6 says, Consider it great joy, my brothers. Now, some of you recognize this verse. Some of you know that we're going to start talking about 
having patience. Many of you have told me, oh, don't preach on patience, preacher. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't want patience because when you get when you pray for patience, you'll get tribulation. I got news for you. The answer is the same every time. I will preach God's word because God's word is true over the top of what you think over the top of your petty feelings, over your warm and fuzzy desire to have what will make you feel good. Let me just come out right now and say, I will not always preach what makes you feel good. I will preach what God says. And he says, consider it all joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance or patience. But endurance must complete its perfect work. Patience must have its complete work that makes you mature and complete and doesn't let you go through life lacking anything. That means God knows what you need and he knows to when you put your feet to the fire and he knows when to put you through things that test your patience because when you are tested, you're going to come out like silver, like gold. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, he should ask of God. That means you should be asking for patience. You should be asking for wisdom. Who gives all generously and without criticizing. And it will be given to you. But let him ask in faith without doubting. For the doubter is like the surging sea, driving, driven and tossed by the winds. But will you please understand, when you trust God, don't trust him as long as it meets your needs as long as you get what you want here's a quote for you from me god is not your personal gumball machine you don't get to put in your little quarter of prayer and turn the little dial and have some of you say, what is that? I, uh, you weren't raised along you, you, the way I was raised. You put, you begged your mom for a, a nickel or you begged your mom for a dime and you put it in the little slot and you turn the handle and out come a couple of gumballs and you got to have what you did. Listen, God is not your personal gumball machine. You don't put in your little prayer, turn the handle, and God says, Dink, there you go, you get one. There is no, there's no way I can make this too plain for you. Unanswered prayer has a rhyme and a reason. Always. Because God is not the author of confusion. God is a God who is in control and his world is going to go according to his plan. And what God is wanting for us to do is pray hard for what he wants us to, to pray for and then leave the results up to him. And yes, that means sometimes you're not going to get what you wanted. Difficulties are for your growth and maturing. It's, Paul, by the way, check this out. Paul and Peter and Jesus and all of these guys, they did not pray for anyone's relief from circumstances. They prayed for the strength to go through it. Peter, when he was facing Jesus, uh, Jesus told him, he says, well, Luke 22, 31 and 32 says, Jesus answered him, Simon, Simon, I, Satan has asked to have all of you, to sift you like wheat. But I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, <laughs> wait a minute, he just said, so when you failed, so when you did it wrong, you can turn to me again and you can repent, that means turn around, and turn to me again, strengthen and uphold your brothers. In other words, it's not about you, Peter. This test, your Satan has asked me to let him test you, and you're going to fail, buddy. And when you fail, you repent and come back, and I'll give you a ministry to reach out to your brothers. That's basically what he's saying. So difficulties bring endurance. Patience brings wisdom. Keep asking in faith and realizing that God will answer in italics again for you, 
in his will. He's going to answer what's best for you and your circumstances. You can never ask anything that is too difficult for God. But God's answers will come when your desired when your desires match his will. Hmm. Think on that one a little bit. Your prayers are basically always safe to ask. So ask anything. But know that he will never grant you an answer outside of his will. Why would he answer something outside of his will? He is perfect. He is just. He is right. He is never going to fail. So therefore, you have something you can trust, you can ask, but always pull back and say, but not my will, Lord, but yours. That's what Jesus prayed. And that's where we have to come back to. Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know what God wants you to do, and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect his will really is. See, God wants you not to be mashed into the mold of this world so that you look just like all the Christians. God wants you to live in the mold God made you out of, and he wants you to allow him to transform your person into a person that trusts him and knows that his will is always going to be best, and your will isn't to be trusted. There's wisdom from on the on, on high that we can trust, and there's wisdom that comes from beneath, and we don't trust that. That that comes from beneath where we live and, and interact in this world, man, we don't trust that. Trust God who knows all. He knows the end from the beginning. If you, By the way, let me just take a few seconds and say, if you've never trusted God as your Savior through Jesus Christ, through the blood shed on Calvary, through the ability to be able to turn to him and say, God, I'm a sinner. Who am I? I'm nothing. Humble yourself. Ask him and let him forgive the sin that is besetting your life, that is changing you into that which he doesn't want. Let him be the one that guides your life. Can you think about your life? Think about the treasures in your life. Think about this. It's never good in God's will. It's not never totally in God's will for you to be totally consumed by what's happening in this world. <laughs> this world is not my home. This, As a Christian, this world is not your home. Hebrews said the book of Hebrews says that peop, these people died by in faith in the in in the in the heroes chapter he said all these people died in faith looking for a country that came from God not this world this world is not our home this body is not my forever home this body is what i am suffering through to get to my eternal home so Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 21 says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys and where the thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is where your heart is also. We tell on ourselves, what treasures do you have? What items do you own? Or what land do you have? Or what house do you own? Or what, where you put your treasure? That's not what God wants. God wants you to treasure him. He wants you to treasure his kingdom. He wants you to look first to what God has for you and say, oh, I'm going to get there eventually. Until then, I will, and he calls it sojourn, or another word for it is occupy this country until I get there. That means I don't just quit living here. 
It means that I do take part in the, in the community around me. I do seek for the betterment of God's word and, the God, and God's uh, uh, will for, for us. However, you're never going to get me to say this is where everything resides in my life. No, my life resides in heaven. That's what scriptures say. Your prayers are always safe when you give them over to what God wants out of your life. What do we say? Keep reading. Don't worry about these things, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? What shall we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. Then he'll give you everything you want. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring his own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Just understand, when you start learning this, you will be happy. You, your joy will be there. Don't worry about tomorrow. It'll be whatever it is. Put your faith and trust in God. So the pattern of prayer for submission is simple. You ready? Go to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. This tells you what you need to do to pattern your prayer life after what God wants. Then if my people, which are called by my name, that's God talking, and God is saying when you belong to him, you're going to be called by his name. Christians, do you see the Christ in Christians there? Uh-huh. You belong to Jesus Christ. You are in Jesus Christ. Christians pattern your prayers after what God wants. But listen to the pattern here that he says. When they pray, they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. You want America healed? You want the country you live in healed? Then all you have to do is put yourself in position to trust God for who he is and what he wants. And don't put your faith in what the world around you is like. So there's some important words and I'm going to quit. First, humble yourself. The words in that verse say, humble themselves and pray. As long as you are filled with pride and filled with, I know what I want and I've got to have what I want because I am somebody, you're never going to be satisfied. Humble yourself and recognize that you don't know what is best for your own life. My Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You know what that means? It means trust in the Lord. And it means seek his, his will in everything that we do and don't seek your own pathway. Trust him. Um, when you look at seeking his face, that's a ne the next phrase in that, in that. Humble himself. That we are to humble ourselves. That we are to seek God's face, his face, by trusting him and by giving way to his will. Uh, James 4, 15 says what you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live like this or do this or do that. See, God wants you to start learning to pray prayers that end in, I want what you want, God. I don't want what I ask for. I want what you want. The next phrase in that verse is, confess our sins. We are to confess our sins to him. John, 1 John 1, 9, but if we confess our sins, we are, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's going to cleanse you from every wrong if you will just lay down your own pride and seek his face and confess to him. That, that word, by the way, means to agree with God. You're going to agree with God that your sin is sin. 
and turn from your wicked ways. There comes in the next phrase, and that is turn away from your sin, which is to repent. And Acts 3.19 says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. God wants you to be refreshed. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be satisfied with your life. It's never going to be there until you learn to humble yourself, to pray, to seek his face, to confess your sins, to repent and turn away from your sins. And then he says in the end, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Then he will hear your prayers. Then he will forgive your sins. Then he will give you the best of everything for your story. You see, God has a story for each one of us. Every one of us has to go through what we go through. In, in the book, A Horse and His Boy by C.S. Lewis, C.S. Lewis wrote as if Aslan the lion was Jesus. And they're being chased on these horses. The characters are being chased and, and they're running fearfully from this lion. And this lion reaches out and scratches the girl on the back. And her and the boy later are, she's suffering from the wound that Aslan the lion gave her. And the boy is is saying, how in the world does this work? Why, after after they quit running and the Aslan caught up with them, they find out that it's 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 Aslan, and 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 he's saying, but why did you scratch her? And I'm paraphrasing the book, but Aslan looks at him and he says, that's not your story. That's her story. You see. The reason why the world doesn't make sense to us sometimes is because we're trying to figure out another person's story. We're trying to find out why God did such and such in another person's life when what he wants you to do is focus on your story, get your story straight with God, humble yourself, seek his face, pray, confess, repent, Make him Lord of your life, and then he'll bring refreshing in because your way will all of a sudden match his way. What can I do for you? I have people who really do not like me, and all I want to say to them right now is while they are watching this, if they are watching this, I love you because God loves you. You can never make me hate you because God is love. I am in Christ and Christ is in God. I am in his strength of the power of the Holy Spirit and therefore you are loved. Get your life right with what God wants. Those of you that do like me, well, I sometimes wonder why. But thank you. But here's the deal. It doesn't hinge on whether you like me or not. It hinges between you and God. It doesn't matter what you think of me. It depends on what God sees when he sees you. You see, because as we ask God to forgive our sins and we ask him to be our savior and he places us in Christ, guess what? When God looks down on your life, he doesn't see your sin. He sees Jesus. He sees Jesus. Don't you want to be in that position? Couldn't I beg you to just pray right now and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. I confess to you that it hurts me when it hurts you, God. I'm going to turn around. I'm not going to do these things anymore. Come into my life and be my Savior. Be my Lord. Pray that with all your heart. Put your trust in Jesus because that's the word of God and the word of God is always going to be God's will. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for guiding 
your life in such a manner that you would come to the Holy Spirit's calling. And if you are saved, and if you are a Christian, then don't just say thank you to him. Say thank you by changing your life to match what he wants. God bless you. And I ask you to be blessed. I pray over you God's peace and love and blessing and nothing else. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Bless us now. As we go into our day, make us able to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.